Okay, so uh, welcome to uh, the next in our series of our uh, geography revision videos. Uh, today we're looking at uh, our second climatic hazard, so we're looking at drought. Um, I'm going to focus this video on the causes of drought, a little bit about the locations in the world where it occurs, and then just a quick summary of both um, effects of drought and also ways in which countries can protect themselves. So, causes of drought, if we use a little diagram to try and sort of uh, think about what we're saying, um, drought occurs when there is a change in air circulation, okay? Usually when we get a long period of high atmospheric pressure, good geographical term. And high atmospheric pressure basically means hot, that hot, dry air, okay? And when we get hot, dry air, uh, basically we end up with few clouds forming, which leads to less precipitation. Uh, when we get less precipitation, those higher temperatures result in more evapotranspiration than precipitation, meaning more water is lost into the atmosphere. So, if we try and put it into a diagram, okay? Let's give ourselves a little lake and let's give ourselves a few uh, panto trees, okay? Normally we would get transpiration coming off our trees and we would get evaporation coming off our uh, lakes and our rivers, okay? And when that happens, it goes into the atmosphere, the moisture of the water goes into the atmosphere and condenses to form clouds, okay? Um, when that happens, Obviously, those clouds become heavy and you will eventually get a period of rainfall, okay? A period of precipitation. And so our water finds its way back to the ground and so the hydrological cycle continues. When we have a drought, it is because that high atmospheric pressure and those high temperatures in the air around us mean that actually our water vapour that goes up into the atmosphere from transpiration and evaporation never condenses. So it never forms clouds, it gets lost in the high temperatures, okay? And in the UK, you know, on a sunny day, we'll have those cloudless sunny days where we know that very little evaporation and transpiration is happening, okay? So in a period of drought, the high temperatures mean that the condensation doesn't happen, the clouds don't form, okay? And the rest is self-explanatory. If there's no clouds, then the clouds, they can't end up being so full that they have to release their water in the form of rain. And if there is no rain, then obviously no water reaches the ground and so the cycle continues and depending on where you are in the world that can be over a period of a week a fortnight a month six months and so on okay um, but because that happens once you lose that condensation you're losing water in the atmosphere you lose the rainfall therefore you enter a period of drought okay so the key points are You've got high temperatures in the atmosphere, you lose the condensation, you lose the formation of clouds when evaporation and transpiration happens, and because there are no clouds forming, there is no rainfall, and therefore you end up in a situation where you've got a lack of rainfall and therefore a drought. Okay? I'm just going to nip over here and just grab this rubber so that we can uh, move on a stage further. So that's the sort of theory behind the causes. Um, if we look very quickly at where they occur in the world, in the world, the thing is, a drought can occur anywhere, yeah? Because at any point you could face a period of time where you have a lack of rainfall over a fortnight, a month, and so on. But as you would expect, our highest areas of risk is in uh, just below Saharan Africa. So if this area of Africa is where the Sahara Desert is, then here, these locations, sort of the central band of Africa, uh, sub-Saharan Africa, this area here, that's where your risk of drought is greatest, okay? Where you've got a high risk of drought. Other areas, parts of Asia, so in India, um, into China, and into sort of, uh, sort of northeastern China, areas of Southeast Asia, and although it's not uh, highlighted as white on the map, Australia is another location that suffers from drought and forms one of your case studies, okay? So three areas of place detail, Central and sort of Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Asia, Southeast and Southern Asia and China, and then Australia in terms of where they're located, okay? Uh, a little bit about causes then, if we just create ourselves a simple spider diagram, uh, or rather I should say, not causes, because we've done causes, haven't we? So what we actually need is effects in the middle of our spider diagram. And if we make these quite general, and you think about um, how you would expand these as part of, say, a four-mark question, to say, obviously, what the effect is. So your most common one 
will be uh, water shortages, so therefore you might end up with uh, governments putting in uh, water restrictions in terms of how much water you can use. Uh, for farmers in both LEDCs and uh, MEDCs you would expect crop failures because obviously there is a lack of rainfall. You might also um, end up with a situation where if they are say cattle farmers or sheep farmers you end up with uh, death of livestock. Okay? Uh, you might also end up with a period of soil erosion if your drought occurs over time so that uh, reduces fertility of the land and therefore makes it more difficult uh, when it comes to farming. Okay, uh, They tend to be your most common ones. Another effect might be um, loss of like, income, Okay, particularly if say you are a tourist area or again if you are like a, a, a farmer for example. Okay, So we won't over exhaust our list of effects, we'll keep it to the ones that we can probably quite happily write about in our exam. Okay, uh, And so finally from me, if we just get rid of those effects there. And remember you can pause this video at any point and like, you know, stop me from talking and uh, make notes in your folders or make notes on, on any sheets that you've got, okay? Our final point then is this, okay? We're talking about how you can protect people against drought. And I'm just going to give you a few ideas and again, perhaps you pause if you need to make notes, okay? So within farming, um, in terms of protecting people, the government pay, can pay income support to farmers uh, or give them low interest rate loans when they have suffered as a result of losing their crops. Okay, that's more of an MEDC uh, method. Um, you can use GPS to sow your seeds, put seeds in the ground at optimum distances so that they grow better, um, even in sort of times of drought. Uh, and they can also limit uh, irrigation and water usage and try and use drought resistant crops. But again, a lot of those are very much MEDC methods. Okay, um, In terms of protecting people, trying to uh, minimise the impact of the hazard of drought, then people are urged to recycle water for other uses, e.g. water in plants. Uh, hotlines are made available to offer advice on how to save water and they use radio and TV adverts, or you can use radio and TV adverts, to remind people about water restrictions. Um, again, more MEDC, but you could see this sort of thing happening in LEDC as well, perhaps sort of, you know, in, in rural areas, spreading messages around, etc. Uh, the government, uh, particularly in LEDCs, you can find that uh, governments will get on board with schemes to try and pump uh, water out of underground boreholes to try and sustain animals in wildlife zones. That's very common in places uh, like Kenya, in Africa, okay? And also, a definitely an LEDC one, where governments work with aid agencies like UNICEF to try and offer um, food supplies and water supplies. Another LEDC protection method is the use of sand dams and they can trap water when uh, you have seasonal rivers. So if you have a seasonal river over the winter months then you trap that water, you can then use it in the summer in times of drought. Um, again, in LEDCs there are drought resistant crops available but obviously they're very expensive for an LEDC to afford. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, again, people encouraged to help charities set up freshwater wells. That's a popular one in LEDCs, okay? And government projects, particularly in MEDCs, and you can see this in your Australia case studies, where you invest in modern technology, really. Uh, desalination plants to take salt out of seawater, um, creating sort of new pipelines, um, extend the areas where water goes to in pipelines, and so on and so forth, okay? So uh, this video is focused on the causes of drought. We spoke about obviously high atmospheric pressure, high air temperature, etc. We spoke about the locations where they occur, we've spoken about causes, uh, effects, and then we've given you some ideas about how people can protect themselves from drought in MEDCs and LEDCs.